But how do we erase the congenital tendency to this magic word adjust? We saw last time that the general response function phi a b of tau which is of course defined as the commutator or Poisson bracket as the case may be in the canonical ensemble we saw that this quantity here could be written in terms of the matrix elements of the individual <coughs> operators A and B. For instance, in the quantum mechanical case, we assume that there is a complete set of states given by the eigenstates of uh, the unperturbed Hamiltonian H naught and in that basis, this quantity got written as uh, 1 over I H cross the summation over n and m if I recall right it was a n m b m n the matrix elements of these uh, operators multiplied by the Boltzmann factors this times the actual time dependence which was e to the minus i omega n m tau this fashion. Check if this all the factors are there. I am writing this down from memory from what we did last time, but I believe it is ok as it stands. These were actual matrix elements. Uh, this quantity for instance A and M was phi n A in the Schrodinger picture if you like phi m and likewise for B. So that immediately led to a representation for this fundamental quantity, the spectral function. So we are going to regard the spectral function, the Fourier transform of this response function to be a fundamental quantity and then everything will be expressed in terms of that spectral function. So spectral function phi a b tilde of omega is of course defined as an integral from minus infinity to infinity d tau e to the minus i omega tau phi a b of tau and this if you use the fact that this quantity here is where the tau dependence is sitting then this is equal to d tau e to the i use e to the plus i omega tau that was my uh, Fourier transform convention. So this is equal to 1 over i h cross summation n comma m a n m b m n times a set of delta functions in this fashion. So it just consists of a whole lot of delta function spikes that is what the spectral function is and we know already what the representation from here it follows a sphere they follows a spectral resolution of the susceptibility itself. So that implies that chi a b of omega equal to minus i limit epsilon goes to 0 from above so epsilon goes to 0. Uh, an integral from minus infinity to infinity d omega prime phi a b tilde of omega prime divided by omega prime minus omega plus i epsilon. We had this relation between the Fourier transform of the response function and the generalized susceptibility. So this will imply that this quantity here is equal to the i and minus i will cancel. So if I put this in then it is equal to well yes 
when I do this I have to be careful because I did this integral d tau e to the i tau times omega minus omega mn that is 2 pi times the delta function 1 over 2 pi is times e to the i whatever is the delta function so there was a 2 pi there so this fellow is minus 2 pi over h cross the i cancels out summation n comma m a n m b m n e to the minus beta e n divided by omega prime minus omega n m minus i epsilon. So wherever omega appears I just replace it using the delta function I replace it by omega n m and that is it. So this is the representation for the susceptibility itself. Okay. So again everything is expressible either in terms of chi or in terms of this quantity. We will use this preferentially because there are going to be various conditions put on this and it is the simplest way of expressing those conditions is to use the spectral function. Okay. Now the first question what kind of function is this chi as a function of omega yeah. Oh yes of course yeah chi is a function of omega you are right thank you yes absolutely thank you absolutely it has got to be a function of omega so omega n m yeah the minus sign can go away so let us remove this and write it as omega, omega minus omega n m plus i epsilon. Right, thank you. So it's got poles. The susceptibility has poles at all the transition frequencies, but this uh, representation tells you explicitly what kind of analytic function this quantity is. You see, it's a function of omega, which is analytic in the upper half plane explicitly. The physical susceptibility for real frequencies is the boundary value from above because as epsilon goes to 0 you should put still put the limit okay. equal to 2 pi over h cross limit epsilon goes to 0 of this guy for real omega for real omega this is the representative but if I remove this i epsilon then it defines an analytic function in the upper half plane and what is happening is that the physical susceptibility in the omega plane is the boundary value of this function without the i epsilon as you come down from above. As you can see you give a small positive imaginary part to it and then let it go to 0 so it is really the boundary value from above. Okay. So what one can do is to define a function of uh, omega for complex omega okay using this so we could define some function let me let me use some other symbol for it I want to do it in the lower half plane as well at the same time so I want to argue that uh, let us let us uh, call this k for want of a better symbol k a b of omega let us define this to be minus i integral uh, d omega prime phi a b tilde of omega prime over we can write it as uh, min minus i is still there so omega prime minus omega omega complex. Let me define such a function. This quantity is defined for all real values of omega prime through this integral, through this guy. Perfectly well defined. After all, the argument of a delta function has to be real, 
otherwise it makes no sense. So, all this is for real omega. Having got to this stage, at this stage I say here is a function of omega, a real fun function. Integrate that function over all omega prime, all real omega prime with the weight factor 1 over omega prime minus omega. Okay. It makes sense as an integral for all complex values of omega but not real values because as soon as omega hits a real value there is going to be a singularity in the path of the integration along the path of integration. So, it is defined as long as omega is not real there is some imaginary part. So, in the omega plane this quantity defines an analytic function okay makes sense everywhere except on this. So, there is some kind of cut here in the omega plane. No, no, no. For every real omega there is going to be it is going to hit it right. Okay. It is another matter that what he says is right because ultimately phi itself has support only at these points. So, even though you are integrating over all omega prime phi itself vanishes in between those delta functions if you like. But you see you take a very large system with a very large number of energy levels so close to each other that it is practically a continuum then practically everywhere in omega you are going to hit a singularity. But now this analytic function here this master function if you like has a boundary value as you come down from above. It also has a boundary value as you go down from below and there is no reason why these should two should be the same at all. What is happened is that chi retarded this is our retarded susceptibility chi a b of omega real real omega this quantity is real that is the physical susceptibility is equal to limit from epsilon goes to 0 from above of this guy. Okay. So, instead of omega you say omega plus i epsilon positive imaginary part and then you take the limit as you come down from above and the physical retarded susceptibility is the boundary value of that function from above. This thing here defines an analytic function for all complex omega. But because you cannot cross the real axis there is no guarantee that the function you get from above and the function you get from below are the same. In fact, they are not. They are not the same. So, similarly chi advanced we looked at the retarded green function, but mathematically you can also talk about the advanced green function a b for omega and that is real too is the limit as epsilon goes from above k a b of omega minus i epsilon. So, now you are approaching from below this guy is guaranteed to be an analytic function of omega holomorphic in the lower half plane. This fellow is analytic in the upper half plane. The physical retarded response for real frequencies is the boundary value from above of this master function k and the other one you may want it for some applications in general you do actually there are cases when you do then it is another analytic function it comes from below. And whenever you have an integral like this you can ask what is the difference between this and that. So, you really have to ask what is the discontinuity of this function as you are across this cut and what would you say well the discontinuity let us do that just for fun although that is not what I am interested in right now. But just as an exercise in analytic functions if you say uh, the discontinuity k a b of omega and this is real by the way 
yeah, equal to limit epsilon goes to 0 from above k a b uh, of omega plus i epsilon minus k a b of omega minus i epsilon. And now the only place where this i epsilon appears is in the denominator, right. So in one case you have, so this thing is equal to, let us write it out, minus i integral minus infinity to infinity d omega prime phi a b tilde of omega prime and then inside you have 1 over omega prime minus omega minus i epsilon minus 1 over omega prime minus omega plus i epsilon. Omega is real and omega prime of course is real as well. What is this equal to? This is a famous formula involving these i epsilons and so on. You see if I leave out this i epsilon and on the region of integration in the omega prime plane, here is the point omega in the omega prime plane. If I leave out this portion of it, I get the principal value hmm? and then the meaning of this omega minus i epsilon means the pole is at this point. In the first term the pole is at omega prime is omega plus i epsilon. In the second case the pole is out here. So as I do this, having the pole here is equivalent to putting the pole on the real axis and indenting the contour from below and taking half the contribution from that pole, right. Or equivalently close the contour or whatever and you are going to get 2 pi i times the value at this point, right. So from above you are going to get principal value 1 over omega prime minus omega. So 1 over omega prime minus omega minus i epsilon is equal to symbolically it is this principal value plus i pi delta plus i pi because you are going to go around anti-clockwise direction from 0 to pi i pi delta of omega prime minus omega and if you put a plus here then it becomes a minus here. Now we want the difference of the two. So you want p plus i pi delta minus p plus i pi delta. So you get 2 pi i times a delta function. So the discontinuity is straight away equal to minus i minus infinity to infinity d omega prime phi a b tilde of omega prime times 2 pi i delta of omega prime minus omega. But that integral can be done. It just says replace omega prime by omega. And the i cancels with minus i and you have a 2 pi. So we have a very interesting result which says that this is equal to 2 pi phi a b tilde of omega. So what we have really been doing is to, we have written a dispersion relation for this k, not a Hilbert transform but a dispersion relation for this k with this Cauchy kernel here and the meaning of the whatever is sitting up there, the spectral function is that it is the discontinuity of this analytic function. This is a general statement. So again, even this master function it is directly related to this fellow here. Okay. A little later I will show that this fellow here, the spectral function here is related to either the real or the imaginary part, one of the two depending on the situation of the susceptibility itself. 
So, what we are trying to do is to get several relations, you know one relation between the susceptibility and the spectral function. But you can invert this and ask what is the spectral function equal to in terms of the susceptibility, it will turn out to be either the real part or the imaginary part and we will see how. But for the moment this is how you show that uh, A, the physical retarded susceptibility is the boundary value from above in the omega plane of a certain analytic function of omega master function which has this spectral representation. The spectral function itself is the discontinuity of this across the real axis. The retarded the advanced green function is the boundary value from below of the same master function here okay. So, it is actually for the price of 1 you solve 2 different kinds of problems 2 different uh, boundary conditions, but we are not going to get into that at the moment. Let us come back here to this and ask the following question. Where do these formulas, what do they reduce to if you had for instance, we have seen there is a temperature dependence, let us see what we can do say about that. So, I need to again write down expectation value of let us write this commutator down explicitly B of tau minus B of 0 A of tau uh, sorry B of tau A of 0 in equilibrium this was equal to the left hand side was the commutate was the response function and we had a representation for it and you have to tell me what were the factors this is equal to I H cross I divided by I H cross so let us put that back n comma m A and m b m n a to the minus beta e n e m e to the minus i omega n m tau. We are writing all these representations for tau greater than 0 okay. Generally for tau less than 0 you would have a certain symmetry property which we will come to in a short while. But for the moment, let us keep tau positive. Pardon me? 1 over i h cross times the commutator was the response function, and that is equal to this fellow here. I mean, it is the commutator divided by i h cross, that is the response function, that was equal to this series here. So, I just brought this across on this side. What happens at absolute 0 of temperature? As you go to 0 temperature, what should what do you think should happen? This would correspond to beta going to infinity. In other words, you switch off thermal fluctuations and then you should be back to quantum mechanics at 0 temperature. There is no IH bar, no bar on the right hand side. Yes. So, and this will be just some algebra, but there is no i h bar coming in any of those. So, dimensionally both sides should be AB. Oh, both should be AB, yeah, right, right, right. Dimensionally both. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is okay. Yeah, because I wrote the response function as 1 over i h bar times this, I multiply by that i h cross, this goes away. You are right, absolutely. Dimensionally, as she says, it should be just AB, perfect. Okay. Now, what happens to this as T goes to 0? Beta goes to infinity. What happens to rho equilibrium? Remember the density operator in the canonical ensemble was e to the minus beta h naught, but normalized such that trace e to the minus beta h naught was 1, normalized to that always. So, what would you say is the density operator? What is the spectral representation of the density operator itself? We are now assuming that the system is describable by a complete set of states in some Hilbert space. 
So, it is really not the formalism as written down here is really not the most general one because I have made a specific representation. I have said that this system has a Hilbert space. There are systems which where you cannot talk about them and describe them in terms of state vectors and Hilbert space. There is some density matrix and that is the end of it. But we have made this assumption that here we actually have a Hamiltonian system, it has got a nice Hilbert space, complete set of states and it is slightly perturbed from equilibrium. So, what is rho equilibrium equal to? As an operator, as an operator, it is e to the minus beta h, but now I am saying let us represent that operator in terms of the ket vectors phi n, in terms of basis formed by the eigenstates of h naught. So, it is clear that what you must do is write e to the minus beta h divided by trace e to the minus beta h naught. That is what that is what the density operator is in abstract form. Now, trace rho equilibrium is guaranteed to be equal to 1 because I have divided by this quantity. Now, let us write this out in the basis formed by the phi n's. So, this is equal to in the denominator it is clearly equal to summation over states n states labeled by n or the collection of quantum numbers times trace. So, this is phi n e to the minus beta h naught phi n that is the denominator obviously. What is the numerator? What is the numerator? Numerator has got to be an operator. So, if these follow yeah if these fellows form a basis for all states in the Hilbert space there is also a basis for all operators right. For instance the unit operator is just sum over n phi n ket phi n bra. So, every operator should be writable in that form. If the operator commutes with the Hamiltonian h naught then you will have only the diagonal terms right. Otherwise in general if you have an abstract operator A you should be able to write this as phi n phi m and then some matrix element here. What matrix element do you have here? That is what you call A and M and there is a summation over N right. That is what you mean by this operator okay. Just as when I write a 2 by 2 matrix a, B, C, D, I mean A times 1, 0, 0, 0 plus B times etcetera and that is the outer product that is right. So, it is just the same thing over again and therefore, what is this equal to? It will have only these projections, it will not have, it will not have phi n phi m here, it is got to be diagonal and then a summation over n of course and this state this projection is weighted by the corresponding energy. Okay. That is of course, the representation of the density matrix in the basis formed by the eigenstates of H naught. So, notice these are operators this is just a number. So, that is what my rho equilibrium is okay. What happens to this as t goes to 0 or beta goes to infinity? So, let us um, suppose that all your n yeah. So, you can see yeah what, what does it do? Why, why should it be only the ground state? But I am not assuming that the ground state energy is 0. Why should I assume that it is 0? It is bounded from below. So, we have we have assumed here tacitly that we have a respectable system whose ground state energy is bounded from below. 
if it is not bounded from below and goes to minus infinity then everything will sit there and take infinite energy to get it up out of there. So what happens now? You see notice that this thing here can be written as e to the minus beta e naught phi naught phi naught plus e to the minus beta e 1 phi 1 phi 1 plus etc. yeah divided by this fellow here and this guy they are all orthonormal so it is e to the minus beta e naught plus e to the minus beta e 1 now if e naught is less than e 1 less than e 2 less than dot 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 which it is because it is the ground state then you pull out the factor e to the minus beta e naught all these factors are going to go to 0 hmm, as beta tends to infinity as long as e naught is greater than 0. But whatever it is you can see that you can pull out this factor which is the biggest of the lot and these fellows will have e1 minus e naught etc which are positive quantities and therefore as beta goes to infinity they will all go away. This e to the minus beta e naught will cancel against this. So it is obvious that this will go to just the projection of the ground state as it should. So as beta goes to infinity this thing goes to just the projector of the ground state. That is what is meant by saying that at 0 temperature things are in the ground state because it says that all the Boltzmann factors go away and the only thing that the density matrix has left in it is the projector of the ground state. There is no need to assume that E0 is 0 or anything like that. E0 is just smaller than all the other E's and of course we have assumed that the system has got a spectrum bounded from below. So what we have to do here in this case is precisely that. Go back to the calculation and this equilibrium now is just replaced by a phi0 phi0. So at t equal to 0 in the limit of t goes to 0 it goes to this. There can be no reference to temperature anymore it has gone to 0 that is it and this is it and this quantity phi naught phi naught is normalized to 1 so that is automatically down there it is gone. Now what you do is to insert complete set somewhere here so insert here summation n phi n phi n and ditto here insert those fellows here. And you are going to get the matrix element A 0 n and then a B n 0 times e to the i omega n 0 or whatever it is and you are going to get the opposite here. So the first term will have A 0 n B n 0 times e to the whatever it is and there will be a term which is of the form B 0 n a n 0 e to the whatever it is and the frequencies here would be just the frequencies would be omega n 0 plus and minus signs. So I leave you to complete this and figure out what this and, and just check that it goes to what you expect from ordinary quantum mechanics each time hmm? and you can write down the response function at 0 temperature. All right. Now let us look at something more interesting which has got to do with uh, the properties of this spectral function. What I would like to do is to exploit what we have for the commutator to write out exp expressions for quantities which do not involve the commutator but any product of two operators arbitrary operators. So recall that we found that uh, A of 0 B of tau 
minus b of tau a of 0 in equilibrium this quantity was equal to summation n comma m a n n b m n times what e to the minus beta e n m times e to the minus i omega n m tau. So this immediately led to the fact that phi a b tilde of omega was equal to a summation over n m a n m b m n this form there was a 1 over i h cross in the phi and then we wanted to take a Fourier transform of the response function so there was a 2 pi and then a delta function of omega minus omega n right. So let us take this quantity to be a known quantity and I want to write various things in terms of this various spectral representations of various time dependent quantities given this. So what should I do? The first thing to do is to write this as equal to 2 pi over i h cross summation n comma m a n m b m n e to the minus beta e n times 1 minus e to the minus beta e to the beta h cross omega n m because that puts a plus e to the beta e n minus e to the minus beta e n so that is okay times the delta of omega minus omega n now since I am always going to integrate over omega in this I have a delta function here which fires only when omega is equal to omega n m so I can replace this omega n m by omega itself so I end up with the phi a b tilde of omega divided by and then I pull it out of the bracket to the left hand side this guy here is equal to 2 pi over h cross summation n comma m a n m b m n e to the minus beta e n okay so what I have got is the first part of this fellow that is this so now I can claim pardon me the knife factor Two pi over i h cross, yeah. Okay. Now I want to be a little careful with the algebra here. So I remove this portion. If I now take its Fourier transform, so I do integral from minus infinity to infinity, d omega. 1 over 2 pi this guy e to the power minus i omega tau phi a b tilde of omega div divided by 1 minus e to the minus beta h cross omega this is equal to 1 over i h cross summation n comma m a n m b m n e to the minus beta e n an integral over omega 
times e to the minus i omega tau times that. So e to the minus nm tau. But what is that equal to? Apart from that ih cross factor it is equal to the first term here came from a of 0 b of tau. So a of 0 b of tau divided by ih cross is 1 over ih cross this garbage. Without that it is just this fellow right. So it is equal to ih cross over 2 pi times this guy. So it tells you that a of 0 b of tau alone equilibrium no commutator alone is equal to 1 over 2 pi i h cross over 2 pi d omega e to the minus i omega tau phi a b tilde of omega divided by 1 minus e to the beta h cross omega. So by sleight of hand what we have discovered we can do this much more laboriously but what we have discovered is that while we have a nice ref spectral representation for the commutator we can do it for each term in the commutator except that the factor the extra factor that comes is this. So it is the Fourier transform not of this guy but of that divided by this factor here I am sure you can. I am sure you can but I think it is a lot more laborious yeah because you know discovering this factor is a little more tricky right. So what I did was I exploited the fact that inside here this thing is, is a function of n and m but I pulled this fellow out the, Bol the Boltzmann factor and then I replaced this by the one with omega and pulled it out of the integral summation altogether okay. I think it is a shortcut. Now similarly for the other fellow you put the e to the minus beta in here you, and you need this term again you pull this out but you have to kill this term. So to kill this and produce E m you need to multiply it by e to the beta h cross omega right. So it is clear that uh, b of tau a of 0 equilibrium is i h cross over 2 pi an integral minus infinity to infinity d omega e to the minus i omega tau e to the beta h cross omega divided by 1 minus So that when you subtract the 2 this factor cancels out from top and bottom and you will be back to this guy you will be back to the representation for phi itself. So we have spectral representations for both these quantities therefore we have one for the anti commutator okay. So let us see what that does so that says oh I should have erased this so it says that uh, the anti commutator a of 0 b of tau let me call the anti commutator plus with the plus here I do not want to use a curly bracket as sometimes is, as is done sometimes because it is the Poisson bracket we use that for the Poisson bracket. So this fellow in equilibrium is that plus this so is equal to i h cross by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity d omega e to the minus i omega tau and then 1 plus e to the beta h cross omega over 1 minus e to the beta h cross omega times the spectral function. But I can pull this one out e to the half beta h cross omega then you get 2 cosh 
and I pull the same thing out you get minus 2 sinh right. So this is equal to minus 2 cancel phi a b tilde of uh, cot hyperbolic beta h cross omega over 2. So the anti-symmetric part the a of 0 b of tau the anti the commutator had a representation without this guy but the anti-commutator the symmetric part of the product has this representation here. Now there is a very neat way of uh, we will interpret these things this was just a little piece of algebra but we will interpret these things carefully. Uh. Does this remind you of anything does that remind you of any particular famous quantity uh, well even simpler than that if you have a harmonic oscillator. So the energy levels are n plus half h cross omega right. Let us ask what is the average energy of a harmonic oscillator quantum oscillator with natural frequency omega at temperature beta inverse right. So let me call this uh, average value of h oscillator is equal to h cross omega times n plus half we have to sum it is not degenerate this thing is not degenerate. So you have a summation n plus half e to the minus beta h cross omega into n plus half divided by the same thing. n equal to 0 to infinity okay. Now look at the e to the minus uh, half is going to go away numerator and denominator we do not have to worry about that. So this goes away and then you have n e to this fellow divided by just this fellow this is a geometric series yeah or d over d beta of minus d over d beta of this guy right. So whatever way it is you can see that uh, with an n up here you are going to get a uh, sin hyperbolic and without it you are going to get a cos hyperbolic from here. So you are going to get this cot hyperbolic once again. So the average energy of a harmonic oscillator let us call it E beta h oscillator at temperature T let, let me call that equal to E beta and let me put it as a function of omega for a given natural frequency omega. This fellow is equal to well what is going to be the average energy at T equal to 0 half h cross omega it is the ground state energy so that is got to come out. got to be that right. What happens as beta goes to infinity to cot hyperbolic goes to 1 as beta tends to plus infinity. So at absolute 0 it is h cross omega over 2 that is it okay. What happens at uh, t equal to z uh, infinity what happens to this guy what happens to cot hyperbolic beta h cross as beta goes to 0 it diverges it diverges diverges like what so cot hyperbolic x what does it diverge like as x goes to 0 what should it diverge like it is sin hyperbolic over cosh cosh has only even powers 1 plus x squared etc over 2. So only the sin hyperbolic is relevant what does sin hyperbolic x do as x goes to 0 what does sin x do as x goes to 0 goes to 0 like what like x goes to 0 like x 
So, cot hy sin hyperbolic also goes to 0 like x exactly like x. So, cot hyperbolic therefore x goes like 1 over x. So, this leading term is going to be h cross omega over 2 1 over x is 2 over beta h cross omega equal to k Boltzmann t right. Now, classically what is the average energy of an oscillator at temperature t? Half k t because of the kinetic energy, half k t because of the potential energy, so it is k t. This is the Dulong Petit limit or whatever classical limit. So, we are in good shape, it matches. So, this is in fact the formula, and therefore, you can write this thing now this fellow down in terms of this E beta. You can write this cot hyperbolic as 2 over h cross omega so this h cross goes away here and you are left with this this is 1 over 2 pi i and the 2 goes away that is it ok. Sometimes this is called the fluctuation dissipation theorem we will we will get back to this we will see ok all right. So, th this uh, this thing here is just shorthand for this uh, thing here there is no oscillator we are talking about but it is convenient it is very convenient to use that. But the crucial point is we now have spectral representations for the product of two operators at different time arguments all of it in equilibrium by the way everything is with respect to the equilibrium ensemble okay. and from this we are now going to start extracting some physics okay. So, I will stop here now. <laughs>